In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, after the last meeting with his apostles, ascends and is taken up in a cloud to heaven. As you exit church today, you come forward, you will see the beautiful icon of the ascension that we have. We celebrated the ascension of the Lord this past Thursday with a beautiful vigil, which is exactly 40 days after Easter. If we have faithfully participated in the joy of the Easter season, we experience a certain spiritual letdown on Ascension Day. The resurrectional banner is put away. We stop saying Christ is risen. The epitaphio is put back. The Easter lilies are taken away. We know perfectly well that it is one of the great Christian feasts, Ascension. Yet despite ourselves, it seems like a parting, a separation, as if our Lord is not with us in quite the same way any longer. The disciples, however, did not react like this at the Ascension. They may have experienced some sorrow, but on the contrary, And we read in the Gospel of St. Luke, they return to Jerusalem with great joy. Their father, the Messiah, had left them. He was with them for 40 days after the resurrection. He left them and he ascends to heaven. You would think, of course, that they would be sad, but rather they were experiencing great joy at what would to come, knowing that this was part of the divine plan. We too should try and enter into this joy and significance of the ascension of our Lord. Why does the ascension bring joy to Christians? Because the ascension, in essence, is the crown of Christ's earthly mission. He has accomplished on earth the mission that he had received from the Father. Now, He will be welcomed by his Father and will be glorified in heaven for his victory over sin and death. The ascension marks God's acceptance of the Son's whole work of salvation, the completion of his mission on earth. In Christ's ascension, we become members and citizens of God's kingdom. In his letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul writes, God has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If we are faithful to Jesus Christ, we shall be seated with him, with Christ in his kingdom. The ascension makes thoughts of heaven more immediate, more real to us. But what is heaven? Heaven is a state, a state of perfect joy. This joy consists of the vision of God and in intimate union with the persons of the Holy Trinity and their life of love. Being part of this divine life The source of perfection and bliss is an ocean of infinite joy that we are called upon to experience. In heaven, we shall find in God and near Him all those people who are faithful to Him and accept Him as Lord and King. Think what it would be like to have a constant sight of our Lord, to be close to Him always, and living a life penetrated by His perfect love forever. Do we think of heaven as our permanent home often, though? For many Christians, life in heaven is no more than a supplement of life on earth. Life in heaven is seen somewhat as a postscript, an appendix to a book whose text is formed 
by earthly life. But I would say the opposite is true. Our earthly life is the preface to the book. Life in heaven will be its main text. And this text is endless, eternal. To make use of another image, our earthly life is but a tunnel, narrow, dark, and very short, which opens onto a magnificent, sunlit landscape. We think too much of what our life is now in the tunnel. We do not think of what it will be like in eternity. Our lives would be transformed if from now on we threw our hearts over that barrier, beyond this world, into the kingdom where we will find our own true well-being and the well-being of those whom we love. When we actively participate in the worship of the Orthodox Church, we are experiencing a glimpse, a foretaste of the kingdom. When the disciples had been separated from Jesus, they remained full of hope, for they knew that they were to receive the Spirit on Pentecost. Jesus commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit coming on Pentecost. The cloud surrounds Jesus as he ascends into heaven. But this cloud is colored already by the fire of Pentecost. At the ascension, Jesus departs from us. On Pentecost, he comes to us in the Holy Spirit, anointing us with the eternal presence. Luke writes, Jesus withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. This is what the Feast of Ascension should be for us. We should return to our homes with great joy because Christ offers us salvation and heaven is open right now. We experience heaven through His church and especially during the Divine Liturgy. This is why you hear me reminding you often to come to the liturgical services on time. Follow along in your books understand the prayers, sing with the choir, because what we are experiencing inside this church is heaven on earth. Let us all return to our lives, to our homes, like the apostles, with great joy. And let us experience heaven on earth through the Eucharist. To our ascended Lord be glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us rise and participate in His Holy Eucharist, those Orthodox Christians who have prepared themselves so that we together may be united and experience heaven on earth. I believe and confess